our midweek time of being in the Word of God. We're so glad that you are joining with us and that we together can fellowship around the Word of God. Know how we need that today, ladies and gentlemen. I believe personally as a believer in my own personal life, I've never felt the need as strong as I do about hearing from God. Somebody said, well, preacher, don't you know that God don't speak to us? No, 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 no. That's not so, ladies and gentlemen. God speaks more plain to us today than any other time. Hebrews chapter 1 tells us that very plainly. If you want to hear from God, you've got to get your Bible. You've got to get down. You've got to diligently search and, search and seek out what God has to say to you. And it has to be with the right heart and the right spirit. But God speaks so plain today. But we've got to be listening. Because God speaks in a still small voice. And it's in his Bible. And so I want us today to understand. Now there's a question that's come up that I want us to address tonight. With all that's going on, with all this going on, why is God silent? He sees the mess we're in. He understands the trouble we're going through. He sees the heartbreak, the heartbreak that we're experiencing. Why is God silent? You see, the silence of God is a difficult time. And it's a difficulty that troubles countless hearts. You see, there's no question about it. But if you read your Bible once again, you would understand that God at times is silent. No doubt there have been times we wanted to hear from God. You may be searching, I need to hear from God. And yet it seems all heaven was silent. Perhaps some of you even here at this time, believe that God has given you the silent treatment. And here's some of the questions that I've heard. We ask ourselves, why? Why would our God who loves us, according to Romans 5, 8, and who has gone to great lengths to communicate with us through his word, John 8, 32, and through the Holy Spirit, John 16, 13, would keep silent when I'm in the shape that I'm in, when I'm in the position that I'm in. And what I want us to do, ladies and gentlemen, I want God to answer why he's silent. I want God to answer why he's silent. Number one, Psalm 66, verse 18. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. The sin of omission or the sin of commission can cause God to be silent if we have neglected and refused when he spoke to us about that sin, about the need of our relationship being right, and we've paid no attention and we've not adhered to his asking us to repent we will silence the voice of God we can read our Bible and hear nothing you see the Bible tells us sin the Bible said in the Old Testament that our iniquities will separate between us and our God if I regard iniquity, if there is sin by commission, 
That means doing that which I am not supposed to do. Whether it be carnal or whether it be spiritual. To him that didn't know that, what he says there. Then secondly, it might be omission. Omission. We can silence God by simply not doing what we're supposed to as well as doing what we're not supposed to. James 4, 17 said, Therefore to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him is sin. So, when God appears to be silent to us, first of all, number one, we must address our relationship with Him. By the way, the only time that God listens to a sinner is, I'm a sinner that needs to be saved. God only hears the sinner when He cries out for salvation. But if our relationship, whether by sin that we ought not to be involved in, our service that we're supposed to be in will silence God. Because he very plainly says, if I regard iniquity in my heart, then we automatically think, well, iniquity means something out here in the carnal world and all of that. No, it means spiritual sin as well as carnal sin. Do you know it goes so far as to say that a result between you and your brother go be reconciled. Bring your gift to the altar to leave it and then go be reconciled. Do you know if you have ought against someone, family, friend, co-worker, or whatever, instead of addressing it, instead of confessing it and repenting of it, you have been cut off from God. I wonder sometimes how a man and his wife, the Bible even says in Peter, if there's aught between the man and his wife, God's not listening to him. God's not listening to him. You see, the Lord tells us very plainly, if we're going to be forgiven, we have to forgive. God says we're going to have to treat others like we want to be treated, whether they treat us that way or not. And I wonder sometimes how many Christians, or let's say believers, they're born again, but they, they, they shriveled up in their spiritual life. They've had no growth in grace. They've had no joy in salvation because of that ought. They've been hurt. They've been disappointed. They've misunderstood. And they could not or would not overcome it in Christ. Ladies and gentlemen, listen to me. Before you allow somebody else to cause you, take a look in the mirror. Have you likewise? Most assuredly. Whether you know it or don't know it. Let me tell you something. It's hard to tell you and it's hard to accept. We offend as many as we've been offended by. And we need to understand that as long as we have that ought, God's going to be silent to us. God's waiting for us to correct that which we can correct. Think about it. Can you imagine when the Apostle Paul would have not been or accomplished if he could not come to the place where he said, I forget those things in the past. The one thing I do is to forget those things in the past. Listen to me. Listen to me. If we will not maintain our relationship with God, then God will be silent. He tells us that. 
He said his arm is not short that he cannot see. His eyes are not blind that he cannot see. His ears are not deaf that he cannot hear. But our sins and iniquity have separated. You see, God is a holy God. God's a holy God. God knows our frame is but dust. He knows there's no righteousness that dwells within us without the imputed righteousness of Christ. He knows that we're still sinners. But God expects us, ladies and gentlemen, to confess that sin and repent of that sin and walk in the fellowship of Jesus Christ through the Holy Spirit. A lot of people are looking everywhere. Where's the joy of my salvation? Why am I not content? Why am I not growing spiritually? Why has the Bible become dull to me? Why I don't want to go to church no longer? Why do I not want to tell people about Jesus? Because iniquity in your life has robbed you of your joy. Don't you remember where David said, Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. Restore the joy of thy salvation. What caused David... To lose his joy. What caused David to lose his contentment? What caused David to wander from God? Sin, sin, sin. Ladies and gentlemen, sin hadn't changed. But let me tell you something even greater news. Neither has God because he's immutable. Paul says in Hebrews, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's immutable, unchangeable. And if sin has separated Moses, David, and the servants that we read about in the Bible, look, even the apostle Peter was an apostle, number one apostle, but there was a time when sin separated between him and the fellowship of the Lord. Listen to me. Listen to me. God is silent, ladies and gentlemen. Number one, you've got to stop and see what part are you playing in the silence of God. That's the first part. That's the first question to answer. Lord, remember what David said? Search me. Search me. Try me, O Lord. And see if there be any sin in my life. Sin is the only thing that can separate us, ladies and gentlemen, from the fellowship of God. It's the only thing that can break fellowship with God. Listen to me. And things are not going to change. Did you address your heart? To be honest about that ought that you have against somebody. That jealousy that you have for somebody. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. When a person comes to realize that, then God sets them free. God sets them free. And recently there's been a miracle that I've been involved in from a distance of a how a person came to realize Unless I address the thoughts of my life in a biblical way and forgive, I cannot be set free. But the moment that they did, they were set free. And that's the same thing with you, ladies and gentlemen. And you know what a shame is? Your fellowship with God is broken by somebody else. You see the control that somebody else has over you because they've offended you, they've hurt you, they've disappointed you, they've let you down. Have you forgot that we're all sinners and we live in a sinful world and none of us are perfect? Even the best that we have, ladies and gentlemen, we're still going to disappoint somebody. We're still going to offend. That's why we need to address it. 
That's why we need to, to get it fixed. In Matthew, Jesus said very plainly, if you have all between you and your brother, go be ye reconciled. Why? He said, bring the gift to the altar and leave it. Don't walk out on God because you've got a problem with somebody else. Go get that problem right so you can have your relationship with the Lord. And so you can have that joy that salvation comes from knowing Christ and the free pardon of sin. I don't doubt that some of you has been hurt. I don't doubt that some of you has been abused. I don't doubt that you might have had a rugged life. But let me tell you something, ladies and gentlemen. Why waste the life that you have now by dwelling in the past of what you cannot correct? But you can overcome anything in Christ. Don't let other people control your spiritual life. Don't let a husband, a wife, a son, a daughter, an uncle, an aunt, anybody control your life but Jesus. If Paul could not have forgot all those lives that he'd messed up and how he was treated when he came to Christ. Well, here I got saved and been called of God and look how everybody's treating me. Oh, woe is me. Listen to me, ladies and gentlemen. He says very plainly. He says very plainly, look at it. If I, and I want you to know in Psalm 66, verse 18, the problem is the I. It's not really that person that's offended you, that's hurt you, that's disappointed you, that's caused you heartache. They're not really the one that is causing you to lose the joy of life, the joy of salvation, it's you. Now, they were the method. But listen to me. Listen to me. He said, in my heart. So here, number two. You want God to hear you? You got to get that heart right. No, no, listen to me. It's got to start with you. And you got to get it right. As a believer. And of course, if you're not a believer, you'll never get anything right because without Christ, you can do nothing. If you're unsaved, the devil is destroying you by keeping you away from Christ so you can't be set free from that that's happened in your life. He's giving you that justification by bringing to pass, look how people's treated me. I mean, I was offended in a church and somebody made me bad and somebody made me feel bad. All that's being used is to self-justify. Don't allow anybody or any situation to rob you of a relationship you can have with God through Jesus Christ. Think about that. David learned the hard way and he gives us that admonishment. Let me say it again. He understood. I'll never have no joy. I'll never have no peace. I'll never have no contentment. I'll never be able to enjoy what God's doing in my life unless I confess my sin and repent of it and God restores the joy. See, ladies and gentlemen, listen. Joy doesn't come from without. Temporal pleasure does. Even sin brings a temporary pleasure. But oh, what the consequence is. Real joy, real contentment, Real peace can only come when you're in the fellowship with the Lord. When you are walking in the steps of the Lord. And David was very adamant here in Psalms, you see. And it's never going to change. 
It's never going to change. No matter what. No matter what. Then number two, right quickly. Sometimes God is silent because he's at work in your life. Go to Isaiah 55, verse 8 and 9. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. Listen. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, my thoughts than your thoughts. You see, God is at work, and we will not be aware of all that he's doing. The admonishment, if my heart's right, and God seems to be silent, here's the way I'm to handle it. Now listen to me. It's not going to be easy. If my heart is right, and I'm in the fellowship of God, and it seems that God is silent in my life concerning hearing from him, listen to me. Listen to me very carefully. Here's what God expects me to do. Be still and know that I'm God. Be still and know that I'm God. Because he that waits on God shall renew his strength and soar like eagles to the mountain. Listen to me. When God is at work in our lives, he and he alone knows all that's involved when God is addressing us personally. How many other people are involved in God answering our prayer or giving that direction at that moment? You see, God knows beginning into end. And therefore, when he's silent, Sometimes, and you read a lot about David. David said, Lord, don't hide your face from me. I can't sense you. And all through the Bible, when it comes to that, we're to be still and know that he's God. We need to realize that his thoughts are not our thoughts. His ways are not our thoughts. He's promised to never leave nor forsake us. But the Bible tells us very plainly. So if you're in a period of your life right now and you are in the fellowship of God, you're saved and serving God, but it seems just like you're not hearing from God, God's expecting you to be still. Be still. And wait upon the Lord until He brings to His will and His purpose for you in your life that glorifies Him. And there will be times that we need to be still. Because as long as we're not still, God cannot get our full attention. And if we're super busy, we'll not listen. You see, the Bible said God speaks in a small, still voice. So if I'm not still, and I'm not giving him my full attention. You see, this jack of all trades and master of none doesn't work with God. Well, I can do multiple tasking. Well, wonderful. When it comes to God, there's only one task. Be still and listen for God to speak. So I trust and pray that this has helped you understand. Number one, review. If God is silent to you, look at your own heart. Number two, if you're in the will of God, and it seems as though God is not answering or silent, his admonishment to you and I is to be still and know that he is God. Father, help us to understand. The Bible says very plainly, when we call, you will hear. But he also says that in order for you to hear, and to answer us, there has to be that clean heart. There has to be that heart that's right with God. And there has to be the faith that we one time or sometime 
need to have patience and wait upon the Lord. I ask you, Lord, that for those that are not saved, to help them come to Christ because they'll never, they'll never have the peace and joy that you could give. If there are those believers that are discouraged and, and why won't God answer and uh, he tells me he loves me, but it seems like he uh, has abandoned me. None of that's true. That's all the work of the devil in the flesh. Listen to me. Remember, number one, I must check my heart and see if there's aught against God or against anybody else. For if there is, God won't speak. God won't speak. And then if there is, I'm walking in the fellowship of the Lord, but it seems like that the Lord, I haven't heard from him. He wants you to be still. He wants you to be still and practice patience. Father, thank you for the instruction you give us on why you're silent. May we accept it and may we understand what you've said. Save that one that's not saved. Strengthen that one that's in difficulty and then help that one that's faithful to continue to be so. And we'll praise you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Till next time we meet, God richly bless you is our prayer. Amen.